Leah. I'm Sean. I'm Ron. And, and we're, we're going to talk to you about, about why you should let us borrow the car. From the very beginning, we've learned all about reaction time. What it is, how it plays into driving, and what affects the reaction time. Reaction time refers to the time it takes for you to react, plus the time it takes for you to complete the action. You see something, you think, your brain sends a signal to your muscles to move, and you move. Now that we know our own personal reaction times and based on the experiments, we now use this knowledge to consider while we drive. So some factors that affect our reaction time are conversation in the car, multitasking, changing a CD or the radio, talking and texting on the phone, eating and drinking or sneezing, uh, how tired you are, what medications you take, drugs or alcohol, your age and your personality. If you have a more high-strung personality, then your reaction time is generally better. The faster your reaction time, the less likely you are to get into an accident while driving. You'll be able to see things earlier and avoid possible situations that could hurt you or others. So, we now know how to keep full attention to the roads while we drive. Take a look at this distance versus time graph. You can tell that the car is going in a straight line, so it's at a constant speed. And then we see something, so we stop for a period of time, and then we'll keep going at a constant speed again. In this velocity versus time graph, you can see that the velocity is starting a little bit above zero. As it starts at a little bit above zero, it is increasing in, in speed over a period of time uh, in re regard to a distance versus time where it is at a constant speed velocity versus time is moving quicker is going faster as it go uh, increases in time Learning following distance we can calculate how far or close we should be to the car in front of us thanks to this class we learn how to estimate distances based on various experiments like walking the lengths and measuring using a meter stick we can now accurately estimate how far or close we should be to a car while considering the road conditions, speed, and conditions of our brakes. This is an example of an unsafe hauling distance. Oh no, a squirrel! Ah. <laughs>